Hi, everyone. Welcome to the third session of the Python Data Apps course. Today, we'll be talking about creating data visualizations with Plotly, and we'll dive into the Dash Graph component and a few of its useful properties for app interactivity. But before we dive into the Plotly graphing library, I'd like to reiterate the importance of the app project you plan to build with Dash. Some of you might have already started your app projects while some of you are still thinking about it, and that's completely fine. But from my experience, seeing what others are thinking and doing is a great way to get more ideas. The following Jamboard contains a list of ideas that previous students of this course have written down. You see some pretty interesting ideas here, like a marketing initiative performance, custom performance analysis, data warehouse. If you need to pause the video uh, to read about um, all of these ideas, please uh, do so. I will share the link to this uh, Google Jamboard under the video um, for you to access and uh, check it out outside of this video. But very good ideas here. If you have any questions about the app that you want to create with Dash, um, feel free to post it on the Plotly community form. Uh, that's where we're going to uh, have other members, as well as myself, uh, help you with some uh, issues uh, if you get stuck or, or any uh, brainstorming ideas. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to install Python and VS Code and GitHub. Uh, well, open an account on GitHub. Um, you can install VS Code or PyCharm, but it's better to develop your personal app project on your computer because PyCharm and VS Code have many more features than this uh, Wasm Dash that you see on the screen. This is a great tool to use for proof of concept, for playing around with cold, for, uh, code, for building your Dash apps. But when you want something more sophisticated with files and, and um, uh, folders and um, uh, multi-page, and if you want to deploy your app to the web, you're going to need to create your Dash app locally on your computer. All right. So today we're going to focus on the Plotly graphing library, the first part of this, of this session. Uh, a very common term in the world of data visualization is Schaefer's four C's. People are generally very good at detecting patterns and structures with their eyes people are also easily distracted. So as a rule of thumb, your audience should be able to get the message within the first five seconds of studying your visualization. Doesn't matter whatever your visualization is, within the first five seconds, they should get the message. So to achieve this, your charts and figures should be clear, clean, concise, and captivating. These are the so-called Schaefer's four C's of data visualization. Clear means it's easily seen, it's sharply defined. Um, the clarity is more important than the aesthetics of your graph and dashboard. Clean means that it's thorough, it's complete, it's unpolluted. You have um, uh, clean labels, axes, grid lines, um, and uh, color choice, and so on and so on. It has to be concise, make it easy to conceptualize the point of the visual and make it to the point. You don't have to make it too verbose. Don't add too much text or annotations and captivating to attract the holder, the user's attention. It should try to be captivating. Uh, does it capture the attention? Is it interesting? Does it tell a story? That's the captivating part. Schaefer's four C's. So as you might as you might have already assumed in this course, we are going to use Plotly as we develop data visualizations with Schaefer's four C's in mind. As we briefly discussed in session number one, Plotly has a very large number of figures to choose from and a comprehensive list of attributes which allow you to customize the figure to your liking. We saw this briefly in the last session. This is a high level interface of all the Plotly Express graphs. So you can go to the graph that you want to look at. We're going to see today the histogram. And you can read about all the attributes within the Plotly Express histogram. So let's go over a few popular figure attributes used within Plotly. Right? 
uh, just so you can get some practice. The, the, the most common ones are the x-axis and y-axis, obviously, for the scatter plot or the histogram and the data frame that you have to use. You almost always have to use these first two or first three attributes. But there are more attributes that people will often use. So to practice, we're going to do this together. Take this link, the wasm app, which is under the video, and open it in your browser. This is the first app that is going to uh, appear when the when the wasm dash loads. It takes about 10 to 15 seconds. Wait for it to load. After it loads, go to dashin20.py and click on save and run. Now this is the app that you've seen before. We worked for this already. Uh, go to population, life expectancy. You can click on the radio buttons and see that this changes. The, the y-axis of the histogram. Now, what we're going to try and do is add a pattern. Instead of color, we're going to divide countries by pattern shapes. Right? This is one of the attributes that exists inside the histogram uh, graph in Plotly Express. So let's do this. Take this line of code. You're going to have to pause the video and copy it and into, write it into your own WASM dash, but go to line 38 right here, right above the figure, and just paste this line of code. DFF equals DF, where DF country is in a list of these countries. So we're just um, limiting the amount of countries in our data set. It doesn't matter. You don't need this countries. If you want to put four different countries, you can do that. Uh, but just limit your data set to, to five, uh, from five to ten countries. Then we're going to update this right here in line 30, uh, 39 to DFF. So it uses the new data set. And now, before we run this, I want you to try to add. I'm actually going to copy the question so you have it right here. I'm going to add it here. Hashtag. Try to add the pattern shape attribute to the histogram so that each country receives its own shape. Right? This histogram now has a data set with only these countries. And I want to distinguish the countries not by color, but by shape. So how can we use this link, the histogram attributes, high level interface? We only use the pattern shape attribute to um, to distinguish a uh, country by shape. Pause the video so you can think about this a little bit and then unpause to hear the solution. Okay, so the solution is pattern shape, you'll have to define this attribute, equals country. So we are assigning the country column to the pattern shape attribute, which you can also find right here. And there we go. It's the fourth attribute, pattern shape. Okay, so we're going to do that right here. We did pattern shape equals country, and now we'll save and run, and we'll see that we have these 10 or 9 countries, but each country has a different pattern shape to it. And this is very good to use for people who are, let's say, colorblind, right? If they can't distinguish between blue, orange, yellow, dark yellow, dark orange, red, then you have shapes that makes it a lot easier for them to read the graph. All right, let's try another another practice. Go back to your this uh, link under the video, the histogram high level interface, and let's look at the label attributes. What I want attribute one attribute. What I want to do is update the country legend so it doesn't say country. I want it to say countries with a capital C. How do I update this country? legend title from country to countries. Pause the video, think about it, look for the label attribute and see what it says, and then unpause to see the solution. So the solution is labels. We will go in here, let's do enter so we can see everything on one on one screen, comma, labels equals, it's a dictionary where the key is the original country header name and the key value is the new name you want for it, countries. So now we save and run, and we'll see that country has become countries. Right? This is the label at labels attribute. We'll do uh, one last 
one last practice, one last um, attribute to practice. Go to the high level interface and go click on the first one that says scatter. In the scatter, we're going to look for a, a range attribute because what we're going to do is we're going to limit the range of a scatter plot. So I want you to take this code right here, go back to our, let's erase everything inside the function, erase everything, and just use this code. Pause the video if you need to. Fig equals px scatter. The data frame is df from the original data frame above x equals GDP per cap, and y equals life expectancy. Let's just run it and see what happens. And here we see that we have a regular scatter plot. But let's say I want to limit the scatter plot. Instead of showing points from, let's make this shrink myself. Uh, instead of showing all points from 0 to 50,000, I just want to show points from 10 to 40,000. How do I show only points from 10 to 40,000? If you look at the scatter express attribute, you'll see a range attribute. Choose that and limit the range of your x axis. Pause the video. When you're ready, turn it back on. All right. So the solution is going to be range underscore x is the name of the attribute equals from 10,000 to 40,000. And that is it. We're going to save and run. And now we'll see. Oops, I did it twice. That we have 10,000 on the y axis all the way to 40,000. Just another way to use a cool Plotly Express attribute. Okay, now I want to practice something else. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Okay, now we're going to use the figure reference. I'm going to copy here so you see it. Whenever, if you go to the Plotly main page, to the Plotly um, graphing li Plotly Python graphing library, and then you go to figure reference right here, these are many more attributes that exist uh, for the Plotly figures, right? It's part of the Plotly graphing objects. It is not the high level interface. You would call it low-level interface because it has many, many more attributes for each graph. We have a scatter plot, bar chart, distribution, and so on and so on. So let's go into the scatter, for example. And what we're going to do is, before we do anything, we'll just add a color so we can make this work. Color equals continent. So go back to your dash app, enter, oops, not enter, comma, color equals the continent column. So if I uh, do rerun the app, now you'll see that we have continent. We have five different continents, and each one has a different color. But let's say that this is very obvious for people, and we don't necessarily need uh, the legend, right? In many cases, if the legend is very, very long, you often don't want to use it, or you don't want to show it, because it's, it's not very usable. So there's a way to turn off the legend using a certain attribute. This attribute does not exist here. There is no sh turn off, turn on the legend. It only exists in the bigger low level interface of the figure reference. So what you would have to do, there's many, many, many attributes here. You just do control F and look for maybe the keywords and you might be able to find it like legend, right? And here at the very top, actually it shows show legend, right? And it says, fig.update traces show legend equals and you have to put boolean either true or false so we're going to do that we'll go back to our wasm dash we'll hit enter and on line 39 we'll say fig update traces show legend equals is equal false so we don't want to see it save and run now you see that we cannot see our legend anymore it has disappeared it exists there's colors here but we don't see it one last example of uh, a figure reference could be uh, using the layout. Right here, we used um, like the scatter trace, uh, scatter GL bar chart. These are traces. But if we want to update like something in the layout, we can go to the layout section. Uh, for example, we might want to update maybe the font size. Look at our graph right here. 
the x-axis, y-axis labels and titles seem a little small. Maybe if somebody doesn't have, um, if it's a small screen, uh, not sure, maybe you want to make it bigger. So what you want to do is look for something to increase the font size, right? So you would go in here, you go into layout, you can go into fonts, and then you see you have font, and then you go size, it's another nested element inside font, and you would do this. You can just copy everything, equals, and you have to choose uh, a number greater than or equal to 1. The default is 12. So let's change this to 20. We'll go in here. I just copied everything. Fake update layout. Font size equals 22. Let's do 22. And now you see how, how the font of the whole graph is going to be bigger. See? A lot clearer. GDP per capita. Just a bigger font equals to 22 units of size. So that is um, what I really wanted to show you with the figure reference and with the high level attributes. You have two options, the low level, high level attributes or the low level uh, figure reference where you can, you can customize your graphs a lot more than, than you usually need to. All right, so now that we've uh, reviewed that, I want to take us to the DCC graph in the dash documentation. We're going to go over two different properties of the graph. Go to the graph properties, and you'll see that we have the many properties, but we're going to go over click data and hover data. These are great properties to use in order to enrich your, your data app, in order to create more connections, more interactivity um, within your dashboard. It explains, uh, well, you don't need to really need to, you don't really need to read about it that much. Click data is when you click on something and hover data is when you hover over it. So here I click and here I'm just hovering, clicking and just hovering. But you can listen to that data that the user is when the user interacting with your app and you can create beautiful things with it. If you go to this cross filter example, save and run, this is actually using the hover data. Look how I'm hovering over a marker here and it changes the two line charts on the right hover over a different marker or a different marker. This is actually using the hover data property of the DCC graph. So let's let's practice ourselves and let's see how we actually can do this in our example. We'll go back to, let's actually go take this example right here. I'm gonna share this link under the video, this full app. You just wanna control all, control C, and we're gonna copy this into our into Wasm Dash. Save and run. We're going to see the same app, but with a, with a scatter plot. But you see, every time I hover, it's printing out the hover data of that marker. All right, so how do we do that? This is very, very similar to the examples dash in 20, right? Same radio button, same uh, AG grid, dash AG grid, a scatter plot instead of a histogram that we are building right here in the first callback, line 38 to 44. We're just taking the value of the radio item, filtering, with, not even filtering the data, and instead of a histogram, we're building a scatter plot. So everything here is pretty much the same that you've seen before. The only difference is the second callback. Look at what we're doing here. Don't pay attention to the output yet. That doesn't matter. Just the input. We're taking the hover data of my scatter. My scatter right here is the ID of my DCC graph. So we're going to take the hover data property, hover data property, which initially could be equal to none at the beginning, right? We're going to take this property and we're going to listen to it. We're just going to grab it and we're going to listen to it. We're going to print every time a marker is hovered on. So let's hover over this. This is, I think, Gabon country, but we'll see that later. Uh, curve, this has points. Inside the dictionary, we have a list and then we have another dictionary of the x-axis point and the y-axis point, which makes sense because the x-axis is 13,206. And this is about, yep, 13,206. So this is how we grab the hover data. But now once we have the hover data, we can do anything we want with it. We can use that to say, let's limit our, our data frame uh, to be a smaller data frame with only this point, only this country. Let's use this new data frame to create a new graph or two new graphs or limit the dash ag grid table to only show that country. You get a variety of, you know, a whole world opens up to you now that you have the data 
of that point that was hovered on. So here's an example. We're going to take this. I'm going to go right here. And look what I'm doing right here on line 54. I'm going to declare a new variable x axis data and we're going to say we're going to take the hover data we'll go into the points key value so here's the points right we're going to go into this list this first list in there and in there we're going to go into the first item of the list we're going to go into this section this first dictionary right here and in this first uh, dictionary we are going to go into the x point so we're going to go into here right right this right here which is a five nine three seven in this case so if we print this out we'll see that we'll get only that x point save and run let's go back to our 13,000 right here I hovered over it 13,204 and you'll see at the bottom here we printed the whole hover data on line 53 and then we printed only the x-axis data only this point right here so now that we have that point, I can filter my data. I can take my new data frame right here. And I can say create a new data frame that filters the original data frame on the GDP per capita, because I know the x-axis is the GPT per capita value. Filter it so it equals only to the x-axis data. I only have this data point or only this data point, which in our case equals a certain country, right? So I have the new data frame. And with the new data frame, now I can, let's print it out. Let's print it out and see what we get. Save and run. Hover. And now we get one country in this data frame. Because there's only one point. It says Gabon, population, continent, life expectancy, and all the data belonging to that country. So now I can build a new graph. Uh, with a bar chart with only that data or maybe uh, a box plot that takes this data of Gabon and uh, combines it with another data frame that has much more data about Gabon demography uh, demographics economy and then plot that on a different on a different chart uh, in our case as you can imagine as you can guess by now the output is referring to the row data and column definition property of our grid, our dash AG grid, right here. This is the ID, and we're referring to the row data and column definition. So we are going to just redraw uh, the table. We're going to recreate the table with only this country, right? So all I have to do is return this, right? And then return this, and I would have my table. So I'm going to return this, I'm going to return column definition. And I have my table. But notice that it has to be the new DFF, not the old one. It has to be the new DFF. Save and run. And now if we hover, we'll see only Gabon. Cool, huh? Let's hover over this one. Norway. Singapore. Kuwait. Hong Kong, China. Um, so that's it. This is how you return uh, the new uh, data table with the uh, um, data that you filtered from the hover data. Now notice that we're using DFF, right? Whenever you update the original data frame, it's, it's called a global variable, you have to save it as a new variable. Do not do this. Do not do DF equals DF, because then you are manipulating, you are modifying the global variable. You never want to modify, it's bad practice, try to never modify a global variable in Dash. Always save it as a new variable. Whatever you want to call it, it doesn't matter. OK, one last thing is the click data. If you go into the graph, you'll see we also have click data. In our case, it's the same. It's a dictionary, data from the, uh, data from the latest click event. And really, the only thing we have to change is the property right here. Hover data, we'll say click data. And let's just change it here so it even, it, it, we can leave it the same name, but that doesn't make sense. Let's change it to click data, click data, click data, and that's it. And now we'll save and run. And this should work the same way, but with a click. So I'll go here, this doesn't do anything. I'm just hovering, but if I click on it, now we'll see that it changes, right? So you can do this with scatter plots, you can do this with um, bar charts. Um, line charts, bubble charts, box plots, anything 
as long as you have access to the DTC graph click data and hover data you can enrich your dashboard in many many different ways all right so I hope you enjoyed I hope you learned a lot from this session number three please do um, uh, practice uh, read more about the DCC graph and practice uh, the creation of these apps while you work on your own app project and don't forget to complete assignment number three that is going to be under the video all right everybody I'll talk to you later bye, -bye.